Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY and whether you're returning or new to the channel, I hope you enjoy this video. This time I'll be making a lidded bowl from random timber offcuts cast into blue coloured epoxy resin. So without further ado, let's get into it. I began by mixing the epoxy resin. I wasn't sure if I would need three or four batches, so I mixed three for a start. I'll just show one being done. The offcuts, by the way, are in a plastic bowl and are out of shot off to one side. The epoxy resin is my usual brand mixed at a 2 to 1 ratio, as per the manufacturer's recommendations. The colourant I went for was a dark blue alcohol dye, but I wasn't happy with it, so I added a small amount of blue mica powder to make it less transparent. With all three mixed, I added them to the casting mould, but I needed another batch to top it up. And the offcuts you can see here have been accumulating in the bowl for a while, and this seemed a good way to use them up. I mixed one more batch and added that to the rest. I placed two kilograms of weight on top to hold it all in place, then I put it in the pressure pot. And with the lid tightly screwed down, I added the usual 50 to 55 psi, then I put it in a warm room to cure. Two days later and the resin has had plenty of time to harden up. When I released the casting from the mould, I was happy to see there were no voids or cracks, though as usual, the offcuts had soaked up a lot of the resin, effectively reducing the usable height. Next I mark the centre at each end and drill the shallow 8mm hole for the tailstock centre and another deeper one for the woodworm screw. I fixed the blank to the lathe using a woodworm screw and the tailstock for added support. All nice and secure, I could begin turning. First up I tried a freshly sharpened bowl gouge, but this just shattered the surface, so I quickly swapped the Easy Wood Tools full size finisher. For this casting I used a different mould, which more or less gave me the shape I was looking for, or at least that's what I thought. So all I had to do was get the piece to round and expose the timber off cuts. carbide cutter I was soon through the chipping left by the gouge and down far enough to see the timber off cuts. I changed the camera position as it was getting covered in ribbons of resin which helped a bit but for some reason with this project it didn't matter where I put it the resin just seemed to be magnetized to the lens. So with the side roughly to shape I wanted to see how it would look with a slightly raised foot. First I used a skew chisel to create a slight curve from the base into the lower section, then I used the quarter inch parting tool to cut into the base, to form the raised section about 5mm high. Once the raised foot was done, I used a skew chisel to refine and blend the base into the side, and with that done, I formed a slight dish on the underside, so it would sit on the outer edge of the foot, then I began forming the mortise.
the mortise, I define the edge of the recess with a quarter inch parting tool. Then I use the dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail. Then I remove most of the inner material with a ball gouge. And I finished up with a skew chisel to clean it all up. Mortise done, I moved on to removing the waste offcuts from the top of the blank. For a start, I wanted to define the upper edge of the rim. For this, I used the quarter inch parting tool to cut in about half an inch, 13 millimeters. But the tailstock came loose and I couldn't recenter it. So I turned the blank around using the mortise to fix it in the four jaw chuck. Using the bowl gouge, I was able to quickly remove the protruding timber off cuts down into solid resin. Then I used a full size carbide finisher to begin leveling the top. But this is where my design changed. I had wanted to make a simple bowl, but a shape began to appear, similar to a design I've done before. So I went with it. Once I was into solid material, I formed a slightly domed top. Then using the carbide cutter, I added a curve around the outer rim to blend the top into the side. With that roughly to shape, I used a skew chisel to refine and fair it all together. The skew chisel does a great job of refining the surface, but I'm pretty sure it's not really meant for this particular job. So I've ordered a large negative rate scraper with a square end. I hope it will arrive in the next couple of weeks or so. When I was happy with the outside, I moved on to hollowing out. Apologies for the rubbish camera angle, it gets better in a few moments. I used the parting tool to define the outer edge of the opening, about one and a half inches in from the outer edge, to leave a flatter section on top. Then I used the bowl gouge to begin removing the waste. This was okay for a short while, but quite soon I had to switch to something else to get underneath the top piece. So out came the side cutting scraper. This is almost perfect for this task, but care has to be taken to prevent a catch. I may get another one and reprofile it with a negative rate cutting edge, just to see how it compares. Okay, so this is a better camera angle. I used a scraper to hollow out underneath the top section, and this got rid of a lot of the weight, and I felt it would be okay to remove the centre support. After that was done, I had clear access into the rest of the inside. With that out of the way, I used a carbide finisher to cut into the base and get closer to the finished depth. Then it was back to the side cutting scraper to hollow out the rest of the bowl. As I did so, I switched to the carbide cutters to smooth out the tool marks and check the wall thickness. I was aiming for something around 3 eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters thick. If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I recently achieved 1,000 subscribers, which is great news, and I'd like to thank everyone for getting the channel this far. But this is just the beginning. As I've said before, I'm in this for the long term, and I have plans to start doing some different woodworking projects, as well as wood turning. So if I could ask, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and click that bell to get notified when I upload a new video. A thumbs up will be much appreciated, and as ever, comments are always welcome. A final check in a few more passes with a scraper and the mid-sized carbide cutter and the inside was done with not one catch or mishap to be seen. I sanded both inside and out to check for tool marks and apart from the finishing I considered leaving it at that but it needed something else a lid. So I used the parting tool to cut a recess to locate it, then I finished sanding from 80 to 3000 grit. Sanding done, I applied the finish. First up, a good clean down with denatured alcohol. 
followed by two applications of a shellac-based sanding sealer, each coat denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Then Yorkshire Grit, a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away till no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing, beginning with Merca Polishine 10, a single coat, cleaned away with more paper towel. Next up, Polishine 5, another single coat, polished off to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax, two coats to seal and protect the surface. Now onto the lid. I cut a piece of ash roughly to round on the bandsaw and fixed it into the coal jaws and held it in place with a tailstock. I marked two circles to define the recess diameter and the outer edge, the latter being completely useless after the first few cuts. Using the parting tool to get a nice square edge, I deliberately cut the lid too big, then I sneaked up on it offering the bowl up to get the size just right. It took a few goes, but I got there in the end. That done, I removed material to form a dish on the underside. No particular reason, but it does reduce the weight and I think it looks better than leaving it flat. Whilst doing this, I removed more material from the outer part so it would clear the top of the bowl. Then a final check for fitment, and then a sanded from 80 to 400 grit. Then I applied the finish. I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Next, I applied sanding sealer, which I denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire grit. Just one coat, thoroughly cleaned away with paper towel. And to finish, Wood Wax 22. A single coat, buffed to give a deep luster. To do the top of the lid, I put the bowl back onto the lathe and put the lid on top held in place with a tailstock. I knew there was every chance of catching the finished piece underneath, but I'd spotted a defect on the bowl rim, so I was going to have to refinish it anyway. Gear scraping with a bowl gouge seemed to be the best way to remove material. I gradually worked my way down to the recess underneath, and when I eventually broke through, the outer ring split into two pieces, and flew off into the back of my workshop. I continued shaping the lid, thinning it down with a gouge, getting ever closer to the top of the bowl. When I got near the finish level, I switched the skew chisel to remove the tool marks, being really careful not to touch the bowl, but not careful enough. I just caught the resin putting a scratch in it, but nothing a good sanding wouldn't cure. The top was close to its final shape. I gave it another go with a skew chisel to deal with a tear out. Then I sanded with 80 grit, which got rid of the rest. 
but I'd done as much as I could with the lid on the bowl. I would have to find another way to hold it whilst I finished it. Before removing the lid, I drilled a hole for the knob locating pin. Then I refinished the top of the bowl. I won't go through it all, but in the first clip you can see the scratch made by the skew. I re-sanded from 120 to 3000 grit and applied my full finishing process, ending with Hampshire Sheen gloss finishing wax. Now I could finish the lid. I used a tennis ball between the chuck and the back of the lid, using the tailstock to squish it in place. This gave me full access to sand it from 80 to 400 grit, then I finished it the same as the underside. time to waste, I made the knob for the lid. I used African black wood held between the chuck and the tailstock, and then I used the spindle gouge to shape the top. I then turned a section down to round and tapered that down towards the locating pin. Using a parting tool and preset calipers, I cut the pin and finished with a bit of shaping from the skew chisel. All done, I sanded to a fine finish, then cleaned down with denatured alcohol and applied a wax finish, the same as the lid. I cut the piece free with a small flush cutting saw, then I used super glue and an activator to glue it to the lid. And that's it, another project finished. I really enjoyed doing this one and I hope you like it as well. The deep blue resin set against the pale colored offcuts sets this one up as one of my favorites. And if you're wondering, the pale blue and white spots are some bits of Milliput that found their way into the mix. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching and please subscribe. A thumbs up will be great and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.